So rock on. So welcome to session seven. We're going to go over character development and we're going to go over dialogue because we covered a lot of story, right? You guys would agree with that, right? We talked a lot about story, giving you the elements to be able to create a great story, not just a good story, a great st story. If you take those, the easy approach, experience, express, extract and embody, you take the easy approach to your storytelling, you will add the life to your story. It is a great way for you to develop your characters, your story, and make sure you have something that will, I'm telling you, set you apart from the masses. No question about it, no doubt in my mind. You start thinking along that for everything that you're doing with your character development, with your dialogue, with your story, everything. You start thinking, even if you're writing a novel, this is not just for a screenplay, even if you're writing a novel, just think in the back of your mind, I'm gonna do this the easy way. Experience, express, extract, and embody. Because that's a way for you to do checks and balances to make sure your story will stand out from the masses, okay? I'm telling you that 100% guaranteed. So we talked a lot about story. Today, we're gonna focus really on character development and, um, and dialogue, because a lot of people struggle with their dialogue. But guess what? You should never, ever, 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 ever have to struggle with your dialogue. It's just an impossibility. For me, never. And I'm not, again, I always say this. I'm not trying to make it about me because it's about you. But then I always go to proceed to talk about myself. <laughs> How does that work? Not about me, but I'm going to sit here and talk about myself. Because I'm trying to give you something that I tell you 100% will work. No matter how much you learn, and I encourage you to learn, keep reading your books, keep watching your videos, keep doing all that stuff, and you will realize they're all going to say the same thing as far as the mechanics and how you put together this and put together that. But you will come to realize that everything someone else is saying, fit, everything someone else says will fit right within easy. Seriously. And you're going to find that out right now as we kind of go into character development and we go into dialogue because we talked about story already. Check this out. So when you think about your character development, think about character development. Character development. Okay. All right. So when you're developing your characters, you're going to say, I'm going to do this the easy way. Okay. So we're going to talk about character development and we're going to talk about dialogue. -y. Yes, bring it on right there. Dialogue. -y. Checks and balance. If you look at your dialogue and you think about the easy approach, you will be able to get your dialogue fixed up, fixed, dialed in, and it's going to separate you from the masses. And um, hey, guys, I've got a chance. Uh, there's a... Uh, uh, 16 people that are on right now. Um, so I got a chance to go through some of the screenplays. Some I've got to read all the way. Some I've got to read up to page 10 and 20 because you can totally get a feel for somebody's screenplay definitely within page 10 because if you just think about this, that's typically all you have is 10 pages to get somebody in. And for the most part, you got less than that. The industry is flooded with content even more so than ever before. So you really don't even have 10 pages to try to draw somebody into your story. And I will just say this for the record. There's a lot of people that are not even here. And I use that as character development. And I'll show you how I use that as character development. Um, but um, dang, I go off on these little rabbit trails. I got to start my character development. Stick to what you were saying. But uh, anyway... So I read a bunch of different screenplays from people and parts and things that they are working on. And I will just say this, all of you guys can write. All of you guys can write. You know what I mean? If you sent your material to me, there's not one person that I thought in my mind, man, how, uh, how, how can I help this person? Um, and and, and, and uh, because of their content was so this or that, whatever. All of you guys can write. So I'm telling you, thumbs up, you guys are rocking it. I'm serious. And I will just say this, 
it is it won't be difficult at all to even take every single piece of material that i read to a whole nother level easy 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 just some simple keys and you guys would be like oh i'll twist that and you'll already take your screenplay to another level oh i just need to tweak that already take it just a few cues and i'm going to try to present some of those things to you even right now in in this particular class so we're talking about character development and uh, dialogue and focused on that. Those two things, just to keep in mind, are inseparable. All right. Your character development and your dialogue are inseparable. All right. So you don't, it's not like you work on one or the other. Your dialogue is a byproduct of your character development. Okay. And that's very important for you to understand. Do you guys remember? when I was talking about how I kind of write my screenplays and then I watch them, you know, I watch the characters do their things and that's how I type up my action. I said that in one of the previous sessions, you know, I watch them, the, watch the characters respond to the plots that I throw at them, all right? This is the antagonist that is creating the conflict, whether that's a person, whether that is something that's internal, your uh, your your antagonists, it, they're the ones, they're the key to this conflict, or at least what they're throwing at the protagonist. Want you guys to keep in mind, your antagonist needs to be the most powerful person in your story. Your antagonist. You create a powerful protagonist, you need to create an even more powerful antagonist. Your antagonist should be the strongest person, and I don't mean physically, your antagonist should be the strongest person in your story. That way, when your protagonist overcomes them or prevails, if they do, then I'm telling you, it's going to be so rewarding for your audience. Okay, does that make sense? Because if you have a weak antagonist and your protagonist overcomes them, we as an audience, what are we going to get from that? We're going to be like, oh, please. You know what I mean? There was nothing to it. They're like, I could have beat that person. But when you're dealing with a, such a powerful force that is coming against this person and your protagonist through the conflict, through the internal, external and internal conflict, they rise and fall, rise and fall. It's like the stock market. You know, the stock market does really go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But if you look at it over the course of time, it's continuing to rise. It may take a huge dip, but it'll go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But long term, that stock market is typically rising like that. That's what your characters are going, are going to do. They're going to just continue to rise. They will fall, be defeated. They will somehow rise up. Okay. They will fall, be defeated and rise up. So that's going to continue to happen. So ultimately, when they overcome that antagonist, whether, ex whether it's external or internal, then there's going to be a reward. Your audience is going to be rewarded. They're going to be, feel satisfied, or they can obviously lose, but I'm talking about the success, them overcoming that most powerful person within your story or thing. Think about it. Uh, Shitu Kamulukumba, he brought up uh, cancer, you know? And as a matter of fact, even when he was saying that, I was thinking, well, um, I kind of don't watch those movies because they are really overwhelming to me when it comes to that. A walk to remember, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I watched it once and it was amazing, never again. But that was a powerful antagonist, right? And the couple, they overcame that, even though the outcome was whatever it is, I'm not trying to ruin it from anybody, but the outcome was what it was, but that powerful force created this conflict. The bully created this conflict and it was such a powerful story, you know? And that's what you wanna have with your antagonist. Your antagonist is gonna be a means to create this insane external conflict, whether it's a physical person or it's something internal, it's a sickness, a phobia, you know, all kinds of different things. But uh, anyway, that's part of more part of storytelling. But in your character development, and hopefully you guys are still plugging away at your own character development. That's something you will do over time. And listen, 
I will send you guys the stuff that I um, talk about in class is even the, um, um, the elements of screenwriting. I'm going to send you that section. I'm going to put it in the Legacy Street Writers Group. So if you're not a part, you're going to miss out. Mm, okay. So jump in the Legacy Street Writers Group. I'm going to send you because I have a whole book on independent filmmaking, you know, but I have a, a section, a nice little section on storytelling and screenwriting does not have the easy approach incorporated within it. That's the book I'm currently working on, taking my easy approach to storytelling and screenwriting, but it does have the mechanics in there. So it has examples of everything that we talked about in regards to the outline um, and the actual elements of the screenplay, breaking it down so you can see with examples in a screenplay that's not all butchered up like the one I showed you last week or the week before, but I'm gonna send you that. The reason why I didn't wanna send it to you early is because I don't want you reading stuff. I want you to listen and I want you just to do, okay? The more material I send to you, the more you're gonna start reading when you should be writing, okay? Because you're being given the foundation and you're given, being given the steps to take to be able to outline, tell your great story, now put them in a screenplay or put them in your book or write your story if you're writing a novel or a short story or whatever. But I'm gonna put that into Legacy Street Writers Group so that you guys can have access to it and it will break down everything, um, but not necessarily the easy approach. That's what I'm incorporating now. So if you wanna have unique dialogue, you have to have a unique character. And I cannot stress this enough, you guys. Every single encounter, every single experience is a story and a character. Every single one of them. And if you listen to the more videos, you read more books, you're going to talk about, oh, you need to listen, you need to watch. That is something that is so understressed because every single moment is a story that you can tell if you decide that you want to focus on that moment and create something. Well, let's go to the extreme. How can you say every moment is a story? If literally someone is sitting somewhere doing absolutely nothing and you take a snapshot of that moment, you can create a story around it. And if you can't, then you don't know the easy approach to screenwriting and great storytelling. If you can't, then your imagination needs to be expanded because someone sitting there literally doing nothing is still an opportunity for you to tell a story. It really is. Every person that you meet, every single one of us, you looking at me right now, me looking at you, we are characters. I've said it before, but to help with our dialogue, we have to look at our character development, okay? so. We have to look at each person individually and who they are. We can have the same experiences, but every single one of us is gonna respond differently to those experiences. And then we're going to shape our lives based on those experiences. One person's gonna go in this direction, one person's gonna go in that direction and another in another direction. Every single one of us, we may have similarities that overlap, but the bottom line remains, we're all unique individuals. Can anybody in here right now argue this? We're all unique individuals. We all talk differently. Can anybody tell me this? What is a phrase that you hear me say all the time? Rock on. Yeah. Rock on. Rock on. Onwards and upwards. Onward, Onward and, and upwards. upwards. Okay. Major Rock on. on. See, absolutely. That is a part of my dialogue. That's a part of my character. Okay. When I talk, those words are gonna show up. When I get embarrassed, those words will show up, not onward and upwards, but uh, when I always say rock on. If I get a compliment, I get all rock on. You know what I mean? When someone says that they did something, rock on, bro, that is so awesome. You see, that is something, if I were in a screenplay, that's something that's gonna show up. I'm a unique individual, all right? Some similarities with some of you, but I'm a unique individual and that's gonna be reflected in my dialogue. Do I talk typically fast or slow? Yes. Uh, yes. Fast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I say that in the very beginning. I say, I talk fast. You literally will have to stop me. And I do honestly make a ch conscious choice 
to try to slow down. But then my nature just kicks right back in. That's why I tell people, stop me and ask questions if you don't understand something or <laughs> watch the replays because I talk fast. This is what I did. And this helps me with character development, okay? I said, there were 138 people that signed up for this class. The first class had about maybe around 40 some odd people and some change. The next class was probably in the 20s and 20, you know, mid 20s, maybe got up to 30 or something like that. And then it just kind of went up and down from there. This is what I did. And then there's some people who have not missed the class, okay? So think about that, have not missed the class. And this is session seven. So they stuck it out. How many of you guys, Everly, right? I think Everly, Samantha, Helen, Ivana have not missed the class, right? And so when I think about this, I think about the people that stuck it out all the way to the end versus the people that dropped off of the first class. And then I said, what do I want? Character development and dialogue is about what you want. What do I want? So I asked myself, what do I want? I want a full class. I want people to keep their word. They said they were coming to the class. I expected them to be here, all 138 of them. I expected them to be here and they were not. So this is what I did. I asked myself, why did those people not show up? All right. And so the people that did show up uh, in that first session that didn't show up to the second session because I wanted something, I said, why didn't those people show up the second day? And I made it about me because I wanted something. I made it about me. What it is about me that made them not come to class. Now, granted, they could have been busy. Granted, they could have said, oh, it's going to be on replays. I don't want to get up at 7 a.m. And side note, I will not do a class again at 7 a.m. I hate mornings. Hate yes. mornings. Uh, I'm in bed at 2 or 3 in the morning. Why the heck did I choose to get up at 7 a.m. to do a screenwriting class? That is the devil, dude. Seriously, I will never- You know it's almost again. midnight in Australia. <laughs> What's that? You know it's almost midnight in Australia. It's, oh um, my goodness. No, 10.30 I, nope. here and half past midnight for Steph. So that's gotcha. why sometimes we miss a couple of classes because we're dead on our feet, Ty. <laughs> oh really my sorry. goodness. Wow, see? <laughs> I won't do that. So we again. show up because we get something out of it. Awesome. That is very, very cool. That's very cool. But yes, you won't catch a 7 a.m. class. I took a business class, Bless a marketing and promotion class, and they were like, oh, this is the time that works best. Man, not for me, but I decided to do it anyway, and it sucks. I will not be doing a seven o'clock class again, period. That's part of my character. I'm a night person. When I go to sleep, I'm thinking I'm going to miss something. Something is happening and I'm going to miss it. I'm not going to be a part of it. And I want to be a part of it. I don't like missing things. Part of character development. Every single element of your life is part of character development. So anyway, but I asked myself about why those people didn't show up. And yes, I understand people are busy, different time zones. I even got messages from people saying exactly that about the time zone, especially. And, um, but I made it to where I says, what is it about me and my character? So I had to look at myself and identify things within myself that caused them not to show up because that's what I was wanting to know, to look at my character. Well, I don't teach the way that they wanna teach or that they either learn or I don't teach uh, or they didn't like the material, all these different things. But guess what? Those are things I get to jot down in terms of my character, okay? of saying, this is how I do things. I do talk fast. Some people can't keep up. So they're saying, I can't do that class, right? Part of my character. It's something that I can make note of, right? It's other people that didn't show up, I can give them my own reasons for them not showing up. Meaning I'm developing this character that I've never even met before. I'm giving him those qualities. I'm saying this person didn't show up because they don't like me because of X, Y, Z. That's what you get to do to your characters. You get to program these characters with these different traits that are now going to respond to the plots that you put into these characters' lives, all right? So I did that with myself because you guys all know me. So look at each other as characters. Every person you see is a character. Now listen to the way that they communicate. You will have people talk about it and they just gloss over it. 
But if you don't just gloss over that and you think this is gonna be the core of my character development, you are standing on a gold mine of character creation because you encounter people every single day. And if you don't, it's a part of your character. It's a part of your character as to why you don't encounter people. Maybe it's your job, I work from home and I like, and I like being separated. That's character development. And that's gonna be reflected in your dialogue. You see, dialogue one is about rhythm and listen to the rhythm in which I talk. I'm not making this up. You can watch videos of me from five, 10, 15 years ago, and I'm still as amped up as I am right now. I can't shake that. It's who I am. It's in the core of who I am. And so that's, it's the rhythm. It's the cadence. We can all say the exact same words in very, very different ways. That's part of having unique dialogue. We're not all the same. The expressions that we use, our hands. Some people don't talk with their hands. Some people do this. Oh, I'm thinking, how in the world do they teach you that in school? Do they teach you that in a, 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 a professional speech class? <laughs> then I would flunk that class. Maybe like put your fingers they together. Do actually, and they do actually teach that. If you teach, if you take a sales body language class, which I've taken, they tell you to do this, they tell you to do like this with your palms up because palms say honesty. Oh. It's, 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 it's interesting, but it actually does work. So. Wow. Yes. It's a power thing too. The yeah, power. power there you yeah. go right Why there. The if you, if you're talking to somebody in person, you talk to somebody in person, you put your, your hand on their arm or right here. If you put it here, it's a more intimate feeling and it actually does work. If you put it here, it, it, you're, you're making them feel like close to you. If you put the here, it's starting that. And um, it's, it's weird. It does actually work. Wow. Yeah. Guess what? Character development, dialogue. You can't be touching nobody these days. <laughs> and no. I'm, a very, very, I'm a very, very touchy person. I'm a very huggy person. I am. And that's a part of my character that has to be worked on because huh, you can't be, you can't even put your hand on a shoulder. And that's so weird for me because I do it not because I've been taught it. It's because I'm connecting with this person, you know, but um, man, it's a trip, but that's a part of character development. It's a part of dialogue. They're inseparable. So when you create your new character, your unique character, you're going to create unique uh, uh, dialogue. And you'll hear me say that on okay. camera. All your characters should not be talking the same. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ask you this. <laughs> How do you catch a unique rabbit? This is a joke. How do you catch a unique rabbit? Unique up on it. <laughs> Such a dad joke. With the gun. That's a great joke. How do you catch a tame rat a tame rabbit? Wascally rabbit. No, tame way, unique up on it. Because <laughs> so, I keep saying that word unique. So that reminds me of that joke my daughter used to tell us all the time. Cracks me up, okay? But you create a unique character, then you're going to have a unique dialogue, okay? It has to happen. Now think about this. This goal all goes back to the easy, easy approach because you're looking at that character's experience and they're talking based on their experience. They're talking based on what the things that come natural, all right? But here's the things that we need to tweak as screenwriters, as storytellers, authors. These are the things that you need to tweak in order for uh, you to maximize, especially you screenwriters, maximize your page uh, assets, all right? You need to extract everyday language because everyday communication, and I don't mean language, communication, everyday communication is boring. Everyday communication goes around in circles, saying a lot of meaningless stuff. And then we have to go in as writers and go and extract what is needed to communicate whatever message we're wanting to send whatever we are wanting to say. 
because every day communication, when you get together with your friends, when you're talking with your boss, it, a lot of it is meaningless communication. You cannot have that in your screenplay. So you have to go and extract those elements. Some of you guys that submitted your work, those are th something that if you look at that, you, it, that's gonna help you in your dialogue. Extracting, because here's something that you will often hear from people that teach screenwriting um, and storytelling as well. But with storytelling, writing, uh, uh, authors, books, you, you have pages where you can um, allow communication and conversations to kind of uh, develop. Screenwriters have a limited page count, all right? So here's something that you will often hear in storytelling and screenwriting. Get in late. Enter into your early. scene late. And uh, get out early. End early. Come into your scene as late as possible to get to wherever it is you, you want and going and get out as early as possible. Here's the thing. That is not just in regards to a scene. It is regards to your story and it is in regards to your dialogue. Same thing. Get into that dialogue as late as possible to where we can get to what you are wanting to say, what your characters are wanting to say, and get out as early as possible. That goes for your story. You remember how we talked about get into your story. You don't have to, if you don't have to show somebody waking up and hitting the alarm and getting dressed and, and getting ready for work or whatever, if you don't have to show that for some reason, then don't show it. Get them right over to the office. If you don't have to show a kid getting ready and getting on the school bus and all these different things, if those elements are important, if those elements are needed, if they are going to uh, set up something that is gonna pay off later, then you incorporate those elements. But if it's not, get the kid to school, have him in his first class, have him walking down the hallway, getting into your scene late, and getting out as early as possible, then you don't give the audience an opportunity to get bored with your scene, with your story, and with your dialogue. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions on any of that? All right, mm -hmm. fantastic. We will just keep going. Some other things that kill our dialogue is characters explaining with the story should be showing. Characters explaining, telling what we are already seeing with our eyes watching the movie, you know, not a talkie, the movie. The characters are telling us what, exactly what we're seeing. Why? It is a waste of space. It is a waste of pages. Your story tells the story and your characters are going to speak from that, but not necessarily be telling us the story that we are already watching, nor the scene that we are already seeing, okay? Now see, this is going back to remember me and my brain and trying to keep me on track. So you guys remember when I'm writing my outlines or I'm starting to get into my action, I'm watching these characters and I'm watching them do their thing. For me, I watch them from the outside to see how they respond to the plot and what I introduce to them. Because remember, your characters are not just going to respond, they're going to initiate. You guys hear that? I've said that in a few classes before. Your characters don't just respond to plots, they need to initiate. Your protagonist needs to be driving your story to its conclusion. He needs to be active, all right? But here's the thing. In regards to dialogue, see, I'm just blending them together because character development and dialogue go hand in hand. They are inseparable to me. So I watch their actions from the outside. I introduce a plot. I watch how they respond. Cool, cool. I got that. I see you did this. I see you did this. And I say you did that. Now, when it comes to their dialogue, I become that character to make sure that their dialogue is not stupid. The characters are gonna say what the characters wanna say. 
That's what's on the inside of them. All right. They're going to express right from their experiences and the experience of that plot, you know, massacred family with the cheese, right? The experience from that plot, they're going to express something within their dialogue. Okay. But check this out. When I go in and I enter into that character now, I am making sure that their dialogue doesn't suck. I was going to say stink and suck. So I said, I don't know what I was just saying just now. But anyway, do you understand what I'm saying? The characters are going to say whatever it is that they want to say based on their experience and what they're wanting to express based on what's taking place. When I go into that character and I become that character now, I get to evaluate what that character is saying to make sure what's that we're not saying because sometimes well, when when we um we say a lot more with silence than we do you know if you're if you're trying to convey something to somebody but you want to be polite you don't normally say what's exactly on your mind and that's that's the important part of subtext absolutely and we're going to get there absolutely you are 100 percent right but in regards to those spoken words you go into your character and you start going through the actions that your character showed you that they would take and this is what i'm going to initiate and you say cool that's awesome now when they start to speak you enter in that character and say dang this is just dumb dude you can't talk like that you know, you are a wingman for your character. You know, when you hit the clubs, you go to the dance party, you know, you want to go meet this person and you got your wingman and your wingman is saying, you know what I mean? When you're blowing it, that's what you become to your characters. It's like, dude, that was stupid, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then you'd be like saying that too much, too much, too much, tone it down. You see, you get to do that from your characters externally. And then when you would, you got what you got. Okay. When you got what you got, then you speak these words and you say, now that's cool. But check this out. Remember, we go from experience to express what it is that we're wanting to say to extracting the things that are not necessary, the redundancy, saying the same thing over and over again or telling us the captain obvious, you're telling us what we already see, exposition, it keep explaining, keep explaining, keep explaining. We're gonna extract that exposition if we can extract it. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary. Most times when people use it, it's not, and it will kill your dialogue. So we want to extract the ex exposition where we can extract it. That's simply exposition is your telling. You're giving the information. Guess what should be giving the information? Your story that we are watching, right? And so again, sometimes exposition is necessary, but when it's not, guess what you get to do? Extract that, all right? And then that leads us, even in regards to dialogue, both character development and dialogue, it leads us to our dialogue is what's left of what it is that we're wanting to say, now we get to embody that. What can I show instead of having to speak it with my words? So when you're going through your dialogue and you're looking at all these different things, taking the easy approach, saying, I have my experience. This is what I'm wanting to express. I'm wanting to extract the unnecessary. And now with what is left of my dialogue, is there any way that I can embody this? Okay, show it, don't tell it. Can I show it in my actions instead of using my words? Because that is going to be much more powerful than you simply just saying that. And so do you guys remember in the very, very beginning when we started, we talked about how you are all natural born storytellers. Natural born storytellers, you are natural born storytellers. And that's something you should be telling yourself as you're writing. I'm a natural born storyteller. Okay. And we used the illustration of a child being bored, like literally naturally born. Okay. We talked about the kid that came out screaming. We talked about the kid or the baby that came out and there was no sound. 
And so the doctors were doing what they needed to create that uh, agitation. You know, maybe there was something blocking their throat, fluid in the something, something, and they needed to try to get that out with a cry, whatever. Okay. But those actions told a story. And something that I didn't bring up then was, and respectfully, even if that baby was stillborn, that baby is still telling a story. Okay. Even if that baby was stillborn, no movement, no communication, that baby, that precious baby still told a story and impacted their audience. The doctors, the nurses, the parents, the people in the waiting room, every single person was impacted by the story of that stillborn who never spoke a word. You think about your dialogue and we think in our communication that it's all about our words. Like, Steph, like Sally brought up, it's not just about your words. It's about what you don't do. What you don't do is just as powerful, if not more than what it is that you don't or that what you say or, or, or what you end up doing. Your reluctance to do things, your decision not to do things are very, very powerful things. Statistically in communication, I can't remember the breakdown right now, um, but the majority of your communication, the ma majority of our communication is nonverbal. They had it broken down and, and I went over it in my last classes and I, I just don't have the numbers with me right now, but the majority of our communication is nonverbal. It's how we say things that people pick up on even more so than what we say, all right? It's our gestures, <clears throat> it's our tone of voice. And it's the things that we don't say at all that speaks more, that speaks volumes more than the words that we choose to let come out of our mouth. Keep that in mind <clears throat> when you're writing your dialogue, okay? Your actions. So everybody understand that yep. dialogue, character development, inseparable. You try to separate them, then you're messing with a whole that shouldn't be messed with. Okay. Your dialogue is a direct reflection of who your character is. Now, speaking of um, just, I just don't want to forget about this repetition in your dialogue is not a good thing. Okay. Remember in a screenplay, we have a very limited amount of pages to communicate our story. Repetition, saying the same thing over and over and over again. If you said it back then, you don't need to say it again, okay? Sometimes, sometimes, okay? This is not a hard, fast rule, but it's something that you need to look at in your dialogue. If you keep saying the same thing over and over again, that repetition, that will kill your dialogue, all right? Um, characters need to have, and you hear it all the time, their own voice. Remember, unique up on it. <laughs> Tame way, unique up on it. They need to have their own voice. If you didn't write your character's name in the center of that page, we as a reader and your audience, we should still know who is speaking because they have their own unique way of communicating. If we were to black out all of our cameras and you, you guys would know I was talking, you know what I mean? You guys would know that I was the one communicating because of the way that I, you would okay, rock on, you know what I mean? Rock on, whatever. And, and, and all these different things that you would pick up on and say, oh, that's Trevor talking. If any one of us or any one of you guys were talking and, and, and uh, we should be able to identify who that person is based on their dialogue, not even seeing who they are, not even seeing their names show up on this screen. That's how it needs to be for your characters in your story. The unique dialogue that they have. I'll give you a little tip, a little tidbit. You hear bits and pieces and you can get some of this stuff from every book that you, whatever. 
Every book that you want to read on screenwriting or storytelling or whatever, they all have these little tidbits. But if you blend them in with that easy approach, looking at those four elements, you will be separated from the masses. I promise you that. But this is one of the things that I do when I write my screenplays. I am 50 years old. But I go to older people and I say, what are some of the things y'all used to say? What are some of the sayings that you guys used to say? What are some of the things your parents used to say to you? What are some of the things that you grow up, grew up hearing? I would pick my mom's brain all the time. My, my dad, because they grew up in different places than I grew up. I grew up in San Diego. They grew up in the South. You know, um, my dad grew up in, in, in Japan. You know, his dad was military. And so just hearing different sayings, and I'm not just talking about the, the, um, the what do you call those things? Um, uh, there are things that we just say all the time. Um, not cliche. Clo colloquialisms. I can't say the word, but colloquialisms. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. It, means, it, means, it means like, um, you know, if you're from the Bay Area, especially from the East Bay, you say HECA or- Oh, gotcha, yes. Yeah, or you yeah. say, um, if you're from California, cause I'm from California, I say dude yeah. all the time. Um, and that's like a dialect thing. If you're from the South or if you're say, from Philly, you say use instead of you. Yes, good stuff, um, stuff like that. So, yeah. Stuff like that definitely works. Thank you for that, Sally. Stuff like that works. But I'm looking at what are those things that we just kind kind of say like um, like uh, um, I can't even think of an example right now. So I'll just say what I'm trying to say is my mom imparts stories to me that I could give to my characters to tell. You see that the wisdom that she learned growing up, those are not things that I can just come up with. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm limiting myself. Oh, I thought you was creative. No, I want to pick her brain and find out the wisdom that was imparted unto her and these sayings that were used, these things that were uh, used to impart that wisdom to her. She can give that to me. And if it makes an impact on me, I'm going to give it to my characters to say so that my characters are now imparting, imparting wisdom to my reader. Do you know how valuable that is? Your oh characters. God, I just realized I did that. Your characters. Sorry, are going, I just realized I did that. What's that, Diana? Sorry, I just realized I, I do that quite often without That's, realizing it when you were saying, it, and I was just like, "Oh, my what? characters have a lot of things that my mom and my uncle said to me in my dialogue." Oh, huh. okay. Yes. Sorry. Do that. Well, it, it would sound better in their voice than it would sound in. in if I say something in my voice, it sounds different because of my life experience, then it would sound and say your voice or my mm -hmm. mother's voice or somebody else's because your life experience doesn't lend itself to that. So you have to give credibility or in, for lack of a better term for, for by, by putting it in another person's voice. Mm -hmm. oh, and for sure, for sure. I, I, unless I'm misunderstanding what Diana said. Oh no, that, that is good. This is exactly what we're getting at. This is, and this is just something that you can think about as you are writing your dialogue, because think about this. Uh, and I probably said it before, there's, there's actors that I can just watch. I don't care what the camera angle is. That camera can just sit on them and I can just listen to them speak. The way that they're speaking and what it is that they're communicating. I'm drawn in. I'm like uh, just somebody that's fawning over them. You know what I mean? I'm in love with this. And I'm telling you, um, and I'll give you uh, uh, James Spader for me. That, that man, I love his different characters. And I don't care if you got all the fancy bells and whistles and all the shots and angles, high angle, low angle, you know, tilting shots, panning shots, moving shots, tracking, whatever, don't care. You can just put that shot on him and I can listen to him talk. And my eyes are just like, bro, oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter. Because of what he's saying, which is his dialogue, what he's not saying in his movements and his actions, the way that he's communicating, and also 
the wisdom that he is imparting unto me when he speaks. Now, obviously, those are lines given to him by a writer, but they got those from somewhere. And me, I cheat. I don't care. I cheat. Mom, what did you hear? Dad, what did you hear? And if it's something that resonates with me and something that helps shape me, you can help shape your readers. You can help your readers get through something that they are dealing with in their life by what your character communicates to them and how your character responds to certain plots that you introduce. Them overcoming something that your reader might themselves be dealing with or your audience might be dealing with them, uh, dealing with. You're sold. That person is ingrained in golf. They are 100%, they're glued because you're giving them something, you're imparting something to them be because of their character, because of your character development and your dialogue, what it is that you're communicating to them. You guys that are working on TV shows and pilots, remember earlier on, I was saying, you're going to do life with your characters. You see, as they learn and they grow, they're imparting that wisdom to us and we're digging it and we're loving it. You know, um, you know, how many of you guys like that show, This Is Us? Okay, a few, few hands, few hands, a uh, few hands, few hands. Well, I love it. I only watch a little bit here and there. My wife's gone through everything, whatever, because emotionally, I have a hard time with that because you mess with my emotions too much, I'm done. You watch it okay? as a family. What's that? You watch it as a family together. As, oh, you, you watch it as a family? Yes. All five of us would uh, make sure that we were free that time during the cast. And uh, we used to make time to watch that together. Huh. Do you uh, cry through it, Trevor? What's that? Do you cry in it? Every episode. Right? <laughs> I have a freaking mess and I watch the Oh show. my gosh. That's why and I you're stopped not watching. talking about just waiting to get to the end. You're talking yes. about throughout the stinking episode. Right, I know. <laughs> That's why I stopped. It's an emotional roller coaster. Thank you. And there are some days I'm like, I can't handle this. Thank you. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. So no, I didn't continue on with the story. It's brilliant. Love the acting. But oh, I no way, no way, no way. I'll leave that to those people that want to go on those rides. I do not. I do not wish to do that. Anyway. Blink it's a yeah, I'm not much of a cryo, but my mom, she can like <laughs> a little and she's bursting and she's into tears and we used to make fun of her because she, she just even a little bit she starts, you know, a tear rolls down her eye or something like that. <laughs> so we used to make real good fun of her. <laughs> That's not other than her. Okay. Uh, I'm so but... glad I'm not alone because I'm a freaking mess watching nope. that. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> No, so that is awesome. But yes, and, and somebody wrote in the chat, they said, I think that's a problem with that show. John Martin, you said that, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's too much. It's, it's too much. Okay. I just want to, I want to, I wrote this down on a card and I want to say this um, because it's going to help you. Um, the dialogue expressed by your character should be as unique as their experiences, as their experiences that define them. The dialogue expressed by your character should be as unique as their experiences that define them, okay? Extract what's not and embody what you can of what remains, all right? You guys can watch the replay and, and, and get that. The dialogue expressed by your character should be as unique as their experiences that define them. <clears throat> Extract what's not and embody what you can of what remains, all right? So that hits on all four of those elements. Dialogue, you're going to have your unique characters. When you are setting up your scenes and you have these buddy characters or you have uh, other people in the scene, one of the great ways and easy ways to create tension in the scene, because we like that, we like that, it's human nature, you know, is to put characters that are contrasting. That they have different wants, different needs, different ways of going about things, different perspectives, 
with your dialogue automatically has an opportunity to be, um, um, or your exchange of dialogue in your scene has an opportunity to be great. Just on that alone, having characters that are contrasting, okay? Contrasting characters, very, very powerful thing. If you think about it, we're all different. You notice different things. If we were all going to the same place, our eyes are gonna be drawn to different things based on what it is that we're seeing, based on who we are as a person. If we go into to a gallery, an art museum or, or whatever, we're gonna walk in there, something that's gonna catch your eye that's not gonna catch my eye, okay? And that's gonna happen no matter what scene or setting that we put ourselves in. You're gonna be looking at different things uh, differently than I'm gonna be looking at different things. Now, when we all sit down together, based on our experiences, guess what? We're going to want to talk about different things, right? I may start off, you know, <laughs> you know, I may start off saying this or whatever, and you can't wait to start talking about something else, right? You might just agree with me just to get me to stop talking so that you can go on to talk about what you're wanting to talk about. So dialogue, to make things interesting, you have characters. We hinted on subtext. We don't, this is important, we don't often say what we really want or need to say. We don't do it, so your characters should not be doing it. Your character should not always be saying exactly what they mean, exactly what they feel, exactly what they think, because we don't do that in real life. We beat around the bush, okay? We take our time getting to something. And your character should be doing the same thing. Subtext is, you know your wife's pissed at you, your husband's mad at you, your partner's ticked off at you. You know they are. And then you say, hey, what's going on? How you doing? I'm fine. That's subtext. Simple as that. Subtext. When you're able to communicate something that is, um, I'm just going to give you an example of things that you can leave out in your dialogue. Look at this. If we're sitting in a coffee restaurant or we're coffee restaurant, we're sitting in the coffee shop and the waitress comes up with a coffee pot, she could say in their dialogue, would you like some more coffee? Okay, she can say that. The audience sees she's holding a coffee pot. So do you really need to say, do you want some more coffee? You're holding a flipping coffee pot. Can I get you a refill? There you go. You just made your dialogue better. Or if that waitress hates you, but she has to go to your table, you want some? You're holding the coffee pot. I don't have to say, do you want more coffee? Better dialogue. Would you like a refill? Didn't even mention the word coffee. Okay, you guys get that? Or if I'm pissed and I don't like you, because I already see what you left as a tip. You want more? That ain't the way you're supposed to greet your customer, but that's the way I'm going to talk to you. See, you've already made your dialogue better. Okay. Oh my goodness. I want a glass of water. No, you could just say I'm thirsty. You know what I mean? If you got water right there, you don't have to say, Hey, you want some water? I just say, I'm thirsty. You want to, if it's past your bedtime, I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. Or listen to a way to communicate. I'm tired. I could say, since we brought up coffee, this just popped in my head. If I'm tired, I don't have to say I'm tired. I can say, I need some coffee. Hey, you just made your dialogue better. It's a better scene now. Because I'm not saying I'm tired. I'm communicating I'm tired by saying, oh, man, I need some coffee. Hello. Or Snickers. What's that candy bar that's supposed to make you better? Not mean anymore. Snickers. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if somebody's pissed off, they could be like, I need a Snickers. You know what I mean? 
And then there's now it's like, what's wrong with you? And you're automatically leading into something based on somebody saying, I need a Snickers because most people know about that. Not to say put that in your screenplay, but to give you an example. Now that other person, because they're familiar with what a Snickers bar can potentially do to you. Yeah, this would be, this should be sponsored by Snickers, <laughs> this video. But <laughs> that can lead into another character saying, what's the matter with you? See, and nowhere did this person even bring up that they were mad. You know what I mean? Okay, see, since I'm starting to get giddy and I'm like on these feelings right now, I'm like thinking, instead of me saying to go bed, go, I'm gonna go to bed, I can say I'm gonna go make love to my pillow. Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> it is different. Your dialogue should be different. Not that that ever came out of my mouth before because it didn't. Never, ever, ever says like bad Trevor, sorry. But my point is you don't say what you mean. Look for a different way to communicate that. You see, you know, and, and I'm not, I'll just say everybody's good at this. Yeah, Cause I'm wanting to pick on, no, I would say everybody's good at this. Everybody's good at this, okay? But we all have those moments where we're wanting someone to say something to us, to really go beyond the surface and ask us what we're really feeling or really dig beyond the, hey, is everything okay? I'm fine. We really want to say what is on the inside of us, but there's something that's preventing us from doing that. Maybe we think this person doesn't care enough to even pursue us when things aren't perfect. You see? So we keep just saying, oh, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. When really you're crying out for this person to say, oh, but honey, oh, but sweetie, oh, but this or whatever, pursuing you so you can finally come out because this person wants to feel valued. They wanna feel like they're worth pursuing. You see, we do that. When you are doing your dialogue, there are certain things that you want to say, but guess what? You don't exactly know how to say it, or there's a reason why you don't want to uh, necessarily say what you are really wanting to say. I'm telling you, this has caught me before, and I hope my wife doesn't watch this video. <laughs> she won't. But there's times when I said something to her and she turned around and said, what did you just say? <laughs> just like that. Did you just say this? And then I will Johnny on the spot come up with a way that either I didn't say that or I will tweak my words to say that she didn't really hear what I really said, okay? That's some dialogue right there. I'm telling you, that happens. Because there's times where I specifically said this <laughs> and she called me on it and fear just rose up on the inside of me. And as quick as I possibly can, I came up with something to steer this thing in a different direction. Okay, <laughs> listen, the example that are just me bringing up character development and dialogue, they're inseparable. All right, unique characters, unique dialogue. You have one character saying things a certain way, they should have their own way of expressing things based on their experiences, all that, okay? Everybody, because I am keep bringing it up and I know we're past our time, but uh, I keep bringing it up as far as the encounters that we have. I never, ever, ever have, nor will I ever have a challenge with character development or dialogue just based on those two things, all right? Every encounter I have with someone, if I take a mental snapshot of you, I will create a character and dialogue based on that moment in time. I'll give you a couple examples of uh, two people that I work with. I'll never forget these guys, never forget them, okay? I worked at a job where occasionally you would see the same person maybe every you know, few minutes or you know, maybe every 10 or 15 minutes, you would come across the same person. Because a while back, I used to, 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 to move cars for a, um, at the airport, just parking cars, different places and stuff. And there's a lot of people that did that same job and, and we would just kind of bounce around. So we would obviously have these encounters with people. I made characters out of every single person that I encountered, every single person and created their dialogue from that. 
All right. Just want you guys to understand that. It's as simple as that, right? Here's two characters that I will never forget. One character was a supervisor and he was a younger guy, but just imagine the parking lot full of cars, full of, full of, full of cars. So it's a big, huge parking lot. He would start talking to you. You're walking this way and he's approaching you. He would start talking and engaging in conversation with you before you can even hear verbally what he's saying every time he would start talking and I'm like, I can't hear you. I, I can't hear you. And we're walking closer and closer together. I can't hear you. Hold on a second, hold on. And I'm trying to get him to stop talking because he's already mid communication with me, right? And so we would have this and then finally we would get together. We would have our little dialogue and pass and he's still holding a conversation with me as he's walking away and I can't even hear what he's saying. He's still continuing that conversation that we had. That is something that's ingrained in me. I will have a character like that. Oh my gosh, that is character development and that is dialogue. Here, that is a very, very unique character. Someone that is talking to you and you, you're like, and I'm telling you, it went on for months and months and months and months. That's just a part of this, who he, who he is, right? That's just one person. But it stood out to me, that's a very, very interesting character and an interesting way for this person to do dialogue, describing someone who is uh, uh, communicates even before they are within earshot of the person that they're talking to. Then I have another guy. Oh man, awesome, amazing guy. Wow, I can physically describe him, but I don't wanna do that. But this is a guy that will, no matter how many times you see him throughout the day, he will continue on with the same story that you never wanted to hear in the first place. Okay? Amazing. Everybody is a character. And he talks very, very slow. Big old guy. Big old guy. Big guy. And what would normally take two or three minutes for someone to get a park to, across the parking lot, he was not physically challenged. But what normally would take somebody two or three minutes to get across the parking lot, it would take him like 20 minutes. He would always get in trouble because he lumbers. He just does that. Now, if I had, I could show you exactly how his legs bend when he walks. You see, but I'm not going to get up and do that. But he just, he just slumbers like that when he, when he, when he, when he walks, you know. And he'll come up to you, oh, man. You know, and he talks really, really slow. And no matter what it is that you're talking about, no matter what kind of conversation you're engaged in, you can be face to face having this communication with someone else and he'll come in and continue and say, man, what I was saying was, <laughs> that's character development and that's dialogue, okay? The things you say, the things you don't say the rhythm in which you speak, the cadence in which you speak. Someone, people, staccato, pop, 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 pop. Everybody has a rhythm when they speak. You have a rhythm. I got you guys all dialed in. You guys are pegged. If I needed a character, I'd be like, boom, got one. <laughs> one of you guys one day gonna be looking at me like, hey, I watched that movie, Trevor, was that me? <laughs> anyway, every encounter you have, Take advantage of those, really listen, you see? And I'm not talking about just having to go to the mall and watch people, you know, or go to the wherever people hang out and just watch people. That's cool, you can go and do that. I'm talking about every single, every day encounters that you have, just driving down the street, your normal routine. You have a, an opportunity, just a melting pot, a gold mine of characters and dialogue. The only thing you need to focus on is extracting the mundane, extracting the repetition, extracting the explanations all the time from your dialogue. What you need to take out, extracting, saying what it is you really mean, mean and what you really want and what you really feel. We don't often say those things. We beat around the bush and then it causes us to ask the question of why I just cannot come out and say it, because I'm afraid. 
I'm afraid of this person's reaction. I'm afraid of how my wife reacted when certain things came out because I will sure as heck say, no, oh, no, I didn't say that. I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was terrified just in the way, man, I took it down a notch. You see, that's why I don't just come out and say things because I just whoop, whoop, whoop. You see, that's part of my character development. But then obviously I've learned that I can't just say what I mean. I can't say, I, well, a lot of people just don't do it, but obviously sometimes it's more appropriate for us not to do those things. But you have to look behind the scenes, okay? As far as why we can't just straight up communicate, okay? Okay, well, oh, 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 oh Tata, thank you. We'll see you guys in the Legacy Street Writers Group. I'm, I'm Think about your questions, if you guys have any, because we're way past eight o'clock. Um, and I'm going to look at the chat real quick because I'm sure that I missed a ton of stuff because this is part of my character. You know, Diana and, and I know Stephanie had to take off, but I would love it if they were like in every single class. I'm, I'm going to hire you like literally <laughs> and, and then just kind of have you in these classes so you can be like uh, Trevor, <laughs> you know, and taking care of this thing because my character will not allow me to do certain things. Guess what? I've had notes in every single class. You think I've really looked at those notes? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> That's why I'm like, every class is different. Like literally, every class is different. I can have a bunch of notes just sitting right here. Anytime I'm doing any kind of speaking engagement, I got notes. And then it's only until after the thing is over that I realize, dang, you should have looked at your notes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a problem. Improv. Yes, improv. improv. Well, I, 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 I study. Notes. I love making notes. You love making notes. That's good. You good. I make the notes. I have if them. You if you kind of memorize them before you go, I mean, for me, because I'm not a good note taker at all. But uh -huh. if I memorize the points, then then they usually come out, maybe not in the best fashion, but they do come out well. So, or, yes. or not maybe well, but eventually. <laughs> yes. I do, I do get my stuff coming across okay, you know, and that's why I say stop me if you don't understand something, you know, because if I stop, because I stopped to read that little card, right? I stopped to do that. Well, I have 25 cards, 20 cards sitting right up here, you know, see, do, did I look at those? Nope. <laughs> you know, you I just go and you're like, dang. Anyway. You post them in the group. Then yeah, we can I could, see. I could. I also have a book coming out. So you guys will be, be encouraged to take a look at the book. Okay, I'm going to post my screenwriting storytelling. And uh, it's really just a section that I extracted from my filmmaking book, but it has that section on screenwriting. I wrote it 10 years ago. So that's my little disclaimer. Obviously I've learned, grown, and then I feel comfortable being able to share my easy approach or at least my process because that's just the kind of the technical boom 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 what you would pretty much learn in every other book you know um so i'm gonna put that in the legacy street writers group and that way you can have really a solid foundation for everything really that i taught except for the easy approach you got that from my heart and soul you know you got that from me hot off the press but i am writing a book um, that that is going to specifically specifically be the easy approach to screen great storytelling and screenwriting. So, but I will get you that. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? You can ask about anything. We just talked about character development and dialogue. Just gave you some thoughts in regards to dialogue, some tips, some notes, and stuff. Just things for you to think about. But if you just look at that, when you see character. And when you see dialogue and you add those four E's and you're thinking, I want to make sure that my dialogue is based on my experience. And because I have a unique experience, I have to have unique dialogue. I should talk a certain way. People should be able to identify me regardless of whether my character name shows up there. And then you extract those things that are unnecessary, too wordy, repetitious, too much explaining, you know, um, and, and, and then embody whatever you can embody. And subtext is a huge thing. A lot of your dialogue is going to be subtext. Awesome, David. Awesome, awesome. You know, a lot of your dialogue is going to be subtext. People do not often say what they really mean. And then when you start looking at why, now you're starting to get some. Um, uh, some stuff directly on you. Yeah. Um, uh, 
Sorry. We're trying to get some things okay. internally um, uh, as far as some uh, a revelation of your character. Why can't they just come out and say that? Is it because of fear? You know what I mean? If you think about this, it's like sitting down and only, no, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm sorry, I said I was gonna stop talking. Okay, so does anybody have any questions on anything? When do we get Legacy Street uh, t-shirt? What's that? When do we get it? Yeah, the Legacy Street uh, t-shirt. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna raffle, I'm gonna raffle off a t-shirt and my a Legacy Street mug and a, a free copy of my book. They're not big prizes, but people like winning nonetheless, okay? Um, but it's just the recognition. I don't have any mugs, so just saying. Oh, you I don't have any mugs? No, the ones I have don't have, like. Oh, see, there I you go. Have hot things, so. There you go. Just so saying. yes, I, I win. Maybe want to send it to me as a housewarming. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Will you shall see. You guys that attended all sessions get five extra entries. So everybody's gonna get their one, you know. Nice. But if you attended all five sessions, then you're gonna have five entries in the, uh, all seven, all seven. Sorry, thank you. All seven sessions, then you're gonna have an extra entry in there and stuff. So got a better chance of winning. And 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 we'll see. We'll see. Rock on. But I'll let you guys know that in uh, the Legacy Street Writers Group and stuff. And I'll, I'll probably do it on video and and do this little roulette like type of wheel thing or whatever or do it. But I'll post the video so everybody knows that it was fair and your guys' entries were in there. And blah, Maybe blah, blah. we can buy as well. What's we that? can buy. We can we can contribute. We can buy some. Oh yeah, absolutely, so absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I would really appreciate that because guess what? Yeah. When I get to the place. The, guys, this is really cool. And that's why I want you to share this class. When I get to the place, if my family's taken care of, I will teach these classes over and over again, back to back, filmmaking classes, and, and they'll be just like this one. No agendas aside from help, wanting to help people to be better writers, better filmmakers, and all that stuff. You know, I want to do all these classes for free for people that cannot afford them. Really, I'm, I'm specifically going after those people but it's really open to anybody. But if somebody is saying, oh man, I wish I could take this class, I can't afford it. I got you, bro. You see what I mean? And if I can do that over and over again, over and over again, I would do that. I wanna to get to the point where I can hire people that can teach my same method. And if I financially can take care of them, their only focus is to take care of other people. That's it, 100%. They're not having to try to pitch anything. They're not having to try to sell anything. It's because they, are earning because I want to pay them well because they don't have to focus on roof over their head, food and taking care of themselves. I take care of them. They take care of everybody else. That is their sole purpose, you see? And, and that's going to happen. So you guys are watching a dream come alive, but I'm going to stop talking. I want to stop talking.